Here we go. All righty. Okay. So mine is base coat. And now what I'm going to do, and just keep base coating, um, but before you blow dry it, do me a favor and clean off your brush. Get all that black out of there and then dry it off as good as you can on your paper towel. Because again, the key to kind of what we're doing tonight is um, a very dry brush, almost like a dry brush technique. So we do not want to have a lot of water. So just clean that largest brush and really squeeze the water out of it with a dry paper towel. Yeah, and if everybody is just joining and getting started, Kirsten is just base coating the canvas in black. So the top and all four sides just in black. I just peeked, it said slow down. I'm already slowing down. No. <laughs> Sorry about that. So keep base coating. I'm not gonna start, but what I am gonna do is I am gonna put the hair dryer on it just while everybody's catching up. And then move it over here so it maybe it's a little quieter. You can't even hear it. Oh yeah, then I'm gonna turn it high. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that too loud? No, you're good. It's weird, the hair dryer almost like cancels out. You can never hear it on the Zoom. Oh, you know what, Marianne? I'm peeking, I think I'm not supposed to. Um, I kind of go in between hot or cold. So I turn on hot, but then I use that little cold button just so you kind of go back and forth. That's what dries it the fastest for me. That's a good, that's a good question. So someone's asking if they don't have black, could they use a different color? Could they use like a dark oh, navy or dark gray absolutely. or dark brown? Absolutely. absolutely. Any of those would be beautiful. Like even a really dark forest green, even though there's green in the painting, would be beautiful. Yeah, you just really want that dark undertone because like you said, you're going to highlight on top of it. Exactly. Yep, so you wanna make sure your, your canvas is dark underneath. And then um, somebody had another question, hot or cold? So Kirsten said she kind of goes back and forth between the hot and the cold button just to get like a really good medium temperature to yep, dry it. Yep. And a little bit more hot than cold, but you'll, you'll, you'll actually see the paint drying. Mine is almost dry. Yep. Yep, and we're using a 10 by 10 canvas. If you have a 12 by 12 or yep. something larger, totally fine. This is just a 10 by 10. Seems to be a good size for us to paint in you know, over an hour. Okay, that felt so weird to have a blow dryer going. <laughs> Sorry so, Kirsten, that. somebody said, is there a substitute before you get started for a palette knife if they don't have one? Oh, boy. Um, let's see. If you do not have a palette knife, this is going to sound strange, but part of the canvas, so like halfway through the canvas, is just using dry brushes, and your canvas will be really beautiful. The palette knife adds the final layer of texture. Um, so you might love your painting without the palette knife and you could go back and add that another day. But if not, when we get to the palette knife part, what you could do, and it will definitely not be the exact same result, but it will be beautiful, um, is you can load at, similar to how I teach you to load your palette knife, you can actually load your brush. Um, it will be different, but I think it, it, I think it'll work. Yeah. Somebody said they use like a credit card or gift card too. Well, and if you're like using chalk paint and faux finishing, a, a yep. gift card, a credit card is perfect. The thing with tonight is like, I'm going to show this palette knife. See how it's just thinner. So you need to get into smaller areas, whereas your credit card being a big square, it wouldn't work. If you have a credit card you want to cut up, you could cut <laughs> it into the shape of a palette knife. But you do need that little point. Like what about even, a, like a plastic like, butter knife? Okay. 
a butter knife would probably work. Um, again, again, I don't want anyone to have a result that they don't love. You know, a butter knife is so flat, you don't get that, you don't get that angle where you can get close to your canvas. So it will work, it just won't be the same, but you'll learn the technique. So, so yeah, definitely a butter knife, um, a plastic butter knife, even, I mean, even if you had like a piece of poster board that maybe you could cut into a similar pattern as a palette, would not have to be exact, but just, you know, a little bit thinner than a credit card. A lot Apple of different stick. things. I don't, I don't think a ruler, because again, the ruler will be great for big areas like the background and the base, but when we're getting in there doing the leaves, you might have a little bit of a challenge. That kind of makes sense. Like, yeah, and once everybody's canvas is drying while it's drying, um, these videos, so our classes are available on michaels.com after the fact. So if you need to go back and rewatch or you're just catching us and you don't have your supplies or you want to paint again, um, you can go on michaels.com on the community classroom page and this video and all our other past Let's Paint videos are available. So it's a great way to go ahead and rewatch. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. Again, I'm peeking at the comments. Yeah, the you're right. decorating up. spatula might be perfect. I don't bake cakes, but I bet it would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So while, if anybody's caught up, don't rush if I'm still going too fast. You can just spend this time making sure all of your paints. Yep. And does the canvas have shape. to be completely dry or if it's still a little bit damp, it's okay? Yeah, I mean, you want it pretty dry, which again, the acrylic should dry pretty fast. Wave if it around. An area that's maybe still wet because there's too much paint on there, you could even wipe it a little bit with a paper towel, but you want it as dry as possible. Dental tools, I'm loving this. <laughs> Um, the, again, the, the black is, is not, the quality of the black is not important. So if you guys maybe don't have a blow dryer, put that black on there as, as thin as you can, um, and it should dry pretty quick. And you know, like, if you don't want to paint your edges, um, and maybe give the top more time to dry, you can go back and do the edges later. Maybe that could could allow us to have more time if you don't have a hair dryer. Painting isn't drying. Even, it sounds so crazy, but even a little movement of your canvas will speed up that dry time for the black. I'm gonna shake my paints. Okay. I think we could probably get started. You think so? <laughs> I can see Lisa. There's no last name, but her shaking her <laughs> face on the screen. That's what we're doing. Yes, you can start with a black canvas. Absolutely. Yep. And so if you don't have a palinite, we just talked through a load of things that you could try as an alternative. You could use a stiff piece of poster board that you could cut. You could cut a credit card or gift card, like an old one. Someone said like a plastic butter knife. Um, again, all different and you're going to get a little bit different results, but it would definitely work to get the paint on there. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, and what size brush are you picking up, Kirsten? So I am picking up my number 10 and this is, was in the set that I put on the supply list. But again, a little tip when we're doing all of this, um, any of the brushes will work if you, if you feel more comfortable with a bigger brush in your hand or a smaller brush in your hand. The set that we recommended was pretty basic, so any of the brushes will work for what we're doing based on what you're most comfortable with. Okay, but I picked up the number 10, and what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put a little bit of the white on my palette. And a neat way I like to look at, when a lot of times when you look at a canvas, you're super intimidated about the pattern. And so what I want to do is I want to break this down into just simple shapes. Like the vase is a square, the flowers are a circle, the leaves are maybe 
a triangle oval with a point. But when you look at something like that, it just makes it so much easier to vision. So again, your, dry, your brush is dry. You want to put a little bit, get a little bit of white and just load that in there. You don't want to saturate your whole brush. And all we're doing is creating the basic shapes that are the pattern. And another tip I like to say is less is more. You can always go back and make something darker, but you can't remove and make it lighter. So in the very center of your canvas, about two fingers, measure with two fingers from the bottom, and then the center, I am just going to, with a very light brush, draw a square, leaving off the top. But that little square is your face. And again, very light because you have no water and just a little bit of paint. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint and I'm just gonna create the table that the base is sitting on, just a straight line. And if you wanna be creative and angle it, you can do that if you wanna have it lower with your base, but I'm just gonna do it like the sample that we've got. And then where the flowers go, we're just gonna view those right now as just circles. So I'm gonna get a little bit more white and right here on the side, I'm gonna very lightly draw a circle that'll represent that flower. And then up towards the top, overlapping a little, another flower that represents the top. And then over to the side, a third flower. And see where my paint, my pattern is very light, but it's just enough to have placement and to be really confident about where we're gonna shade and highlight. So you've got your vase and you've got your three big flowers. And then just gonna very lightly, again, less is more. I'm gonna add where those leaves will, leaves will go. <laughs> Two up at the top. Now this, I should have told you this before. So this little area, it's almost like a little, a little grouping of rosebuds. That we're gonna actually wait till the very end to do. But you, you can see that you've got the spots for that. And then two more leaves down here at the bottom. One kind of over, overlaps your vase, and one kind of goes out to the side. But very little paint. It almost looks like chalkboard. Yeah. It's just a way to add confidence to your painting so that you've got placement for all of your stuff. Yep. And I think people are just getting caught up drawing, okay. and we're using just folk art white. It's not chalk. It does look like you're drawing with chalk. But yep, you're just using the chalk. paint right out of the bottle and really yep. dry brushing that on. Yep, exactly. Um, just again, less is more because you, you want, you don't ever want to have to work to cover your pattern. Um, you want to have fun painting. So the very light pattern just makes it, makes it very easy to do that. So while you guys are applying your pattern, am I going a good speed? Yeah, I think people will give them a minute. They're just um, okay. catching up. Perfect. While we're catching up, I'm going to put the lightest pink on my palette. The dark magenta and just another tip you can't you can't do it wrong but it always makes it easier for me is I love to put a lot of space on my palette so that my paint is not right next to each other it makes it easy later when we load the palette knife but it also just makes it easier to load onto your brushes so I added the very light pink and then the magenta I'm going good a good speed yeah, I think people are catching up, so I think okay. we can keep going. Perfect. And then I'm going to put that medium pink on there as well. You still should have some white. So not washing my brush. Uh, I want your brush to stay dry, so don't dip it in the water at all. You've got a little bit of white on there, which is okay. Just run that on your paper towel. And then the first flower that we're going to start with is this one that is the darkest magenta. So you're gonna pick up some of the magenta. There's no right or wrong way to load the brush. Don't tell Jess or Andy I said that. Um, and then what we are gonna do is we are just gonna soften the edges of that circle to create a really loose flower petal look. These are just really loose C strokes to kind of eliminate that hard circle pattern and it's the same brush, it's the number 10 that you used with to draw yes. onto the canvas, the canvas yep. is the same that you're using. Yep, it's the number 10. And, and again, 
using, if you prefer a larger brush, you can do the exact same thing. Some people prefer a larger brush and some, but you can see you're gonna get the exact same, you're gonna get the exact same look. So then what we're gonna do is you don't want too much brush or too much paint on your brush is in a very random pattern, I want you to fill in that flower. And the key to not having a bunch of paint is you can see that the black is still showing through the pink. Some areas, some areas are darker, some are not, but you do not want to completely cover up that black. And the only other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to dry brush in a repeat pattern. Like you don't want to do all your strokes left to right or up and down. You just want to be very random filling in that area with the magenta but making sure that the black shows. And then I'm gonna dry the same brush on the paper towel, but keeping that dark magenta. You don't wanna add water, but you're gonna get most of that paint off on your paper towel. I am gonna to go to the medium pink. And here's where I want you guys to have a little bit of fun with it. So the pink that we called out on the supply list is gorgeous and it's bright and it's actually the color that's kind of highlighted, if you can see that on this canvas. If you want a bright rose, use the pink right out of the bottle. If you want a little bit lighter, which is what I did here, what I'm doing is I'm gonna scoop a little bit of white off my palette and put it next to that medium pink and then just mix that until I get the shade that I want. So just toning down that bright pink just a little. You don't wanna make it as light as your light pink, but I just wanna soften it a little bit. So once that's mixed, again, remove a lot of the paint on your paper towel, no water, still no water. And then pick up a little bit of paint and you wanna do really loose, random C strokes around the edge of that flower. You're wanting to kind of cover the circle, the pattern that you created. And then just like we did on this one, you want to do very random back and forth, almost like a little hash stroke, filling in that flower. I love when you can see the texture of the canvas. It just adds so much character to your painting. And you want a little bit of the black to show. You don't want yep. to completely cover in the Correct. entire flower. Yep. You definitely want that to show because like I think I mentioned it earlier, normally you would base coat it solid pink and then you would add a darker pink or you would add, you would almost add black to add sh dark shadows. We're just doing the opposite by painting on a dark surface. It's a really, really fun technique to add all of this depth. And even if you can still see the white lines that you drew, that's totally fine because you're going to go sure. back and cover those up. Yep, absolutely. Because this is one layer, then we'll add another layer, and then our palette knife will go in and cover everything up. Yep, you'll be perfect. So we still haven't gone in the water. I'm going to just remove, again, most of the paint on a dry paper towel. And I'm going to go in. Oops, I went into the white. Just remove that on a paper towel. No water. I'm going to go into the lightest pink. Not too much paint. And then again, C strokes. You're gonna kind of overlap your flower there, but the fun thing about this type of painting is nothing is exactly precise. So you can go over that pink flower just a little bit. You can kind of stay and go under that one. If you choose to go over that one, that's okay too. But you're just layering these base coat colors where the flowers are. Yeah. And then a very I, loose, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I think people are just getting caught up. So you keep filling okay. in and then we'll give people a second. Perfect, I'll stop there. Is that <laughs> a good spot? Yep. I can keep going, you guys tell me. No, nope, I think everyone's just filling in. I think the only key is no water, um, no water and then really a light stroke because you can always add more. You can always go back and do two coats of this, um, but you can't take it off. So I think that's really the biggest tip.
for when you're working on a dark, dark surface and doing a dry brush technique? Yeah, definitely a different technique than we've done before. It's a little looser. So somebody mentioned that, that they're a very detailed painter. So for them, they said this is like really liberating actually. So that's oh, fine. Yeah, this is very, very loose. You can add as much dimension as you want. Okay. Maybe we could do the leaves? Yeah. Start okay, on the leaves so and then we can always pause. Always stop me. So I am going to use water just to get that pink out of there. So I'm gonna use my water to get that off and then just get your brush as dry as you can. If you just sandwich it in between two paper towels, it'll get pretty dry. You just don't want a lot of water. I've only said that 20 times, I'm sorry. And still okay. using the number 10. Still using the number 10, yes. So I'm gonna get the dark green on my palette and a little bit of the light. I think that's Hunter and Clover. Correct. But again, any light or dark green you have will work great. Yep. And you know, I could, is anyone using the larger brush? No. Because again, either brush works. I'm gonna dry that one off too, that I showed you how to use the larger one. Okay. So on the leaves, what I'm gonna do is load just a little bit of the dark green and do that same technique. I'm gonna go over the white outline with just a soft stroke and then I'm gonna fill that in. The darker the color is to the black, obviously, the, the less contrast you, you will see, but we'll go in and add that with the lighter green on some of these leaves, you'll see that. So that leaf I'm gonna do dark. This leaf up here, I'm gonna base coat with the dark green. And you're going right over your pattern and just filling that in very random. And then I'm gonna do this bottom leaf, the one that goes over your vase. Yep. So she's using hunter green or the darkest green for leaves. Yep. Then I'm going to clean that on my paper towel. I'm going to flip that over. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the light green. And I'm going to do those other two leaves. And again, just a really loose pattern, making sure that the black is popping through. And it's okay to leave a little, like you can see there's a little bit of a black area. You don't have to go all the way up to your pink, uh, your pink petal just because as we layer with the palette knife, that'll all get filled in. So then I went over to this bottom leaf and I'm just gonna randomly fill that in. And you can see you get more contrast with the lighter colors. Okay. I think everybody needs a second to get caught up. Okay. So we did a couple leaves with the hunter green and a couple in yep. the clover. Yep, these two are with the clover. And these two are with the hunter. And really, if you want to base coat them all with the clover, you just like a lighter leaf, that's fine. Because we're going to add so much texture. And then you can just, if you do them all, base coat them all with the lighter green, then just know when we use our palette knife, you can go back in with the darker. Have fun with this and make this your own, definitely. All I did was pick up my largest brush, dried it off, and I'm just gonna base coat my vase. Now the key with this is don't create a pattern. Don't do long strokes up and down or back and forth. You wanna be very random. Because that's what gives your vase all of that character. Again, you don't have to get too specific when you're going up against your pattern or up against your leaves or your petals. You wanna make sure some black is definitely showing through. Yep. Just a very loose following your pattern. What size brush is that again, Kirsten? This is the largest one, the three fourths. Yep. 
All right, let's uh, let so everybody get caught up. Oh, it's the three, the three quarter. I saw someone ask that. For the white base, I use the biggest one. And then for the flowers, I've been using the small one, the number 10 mostly, for the leaves and the flowers. Now all I'm gonna do is put some gray on my palette. I'm not sneaking ahead. <laughs> And if you want to here, you can put a little bit of black because again, this is totally up to, up to you guys, what look that you like. But this gray, the main color is the steel gray with a little bit of black. So if you want that darker color, all I did was barely touch your brush into the black. Oh, make sure. Barely touch your brush into the black. Black can change a color so quick. And again, less is more. You can always add more black, but you can't take it out of there. So I'm gonna mix a gray that's a little bit darker than that light gray. The Folk Art Acrylic mixes so beautifully. You always get a really beautiful color. It never muddies. So that's my darker gray. I'm gonna remove some of that paint. Again, not using water. And then I'm gonna pick up a little. And all I'm gonna do is the same technique that we've been doing to get our base coats on the tabletop. With very random strokes, covering up your pattern. But very loose. You can have some areas a little heavier, some areas a little lighter just to show shadow or shading. And add a little bit more black. Is that in there? Yeah, a little bit more black. Mix that darker gray. All right. And then just very loose and very random. And it's steel gray, I believe, and black. Correct. But you're just creating that base coat. Okay, so for everybody to catch up, what I'm gonna do is, just like we painted our edges black, I always do the same to the side. So I'm just gonna take that gray and extend that line and just paint where that tabletop would be on the edges. Can you guys see that? Let me slide it forward. Yeah. Just so your sides, it's a real nice finished look when your sides match the top. Okay. And like, for example, right there, you can see where my pattern of the tabletop shows. I can either leave it and cover it when we get to our next step with the palette knife, but I'm going to mix a little bit more of the dark gray and just put a few strokes right over the top of that so I don't have a harsh line. There we go. I'm gonna clean up my brushes, but again, remove all that water on the paper towel. How are we doing? Everyone getting their base coat on there good? All right, everybody is trying to catch up. 
So for anyone that is caught up, you guys definitely take your time and, and get your base coats done. But what you can do, if you saw an area where maybe you want a little darker pink or you want a, a little bit more um, of the bright magenta, you can always go at, in and add a little bit more of your base coat area. So I'm going to go in with just a little bit more of the magenta. And again, just to really have fun with it, you guys don't have to do this if you're catching up. And I'm just going to make maybe just that side of the flower a little bit more vivid. And leave that for the palette knife. And then I might do the same on the dark one. Again, adding a little bit of white to soften that middle shade of pink a little bit, which that is the... I think that's just the regular pink. Yeah. So a little bit of white to the regular pink. And I'm just going to kind of make one side just a little bit heavier, a little bit brighter, a little less black showing through. Maybe another petal. And then I'm going to do the same with that very light rose in the center using the lightest pink. You don't want to create a pattern and you don't want to create a definition around the edge. You want that to stay loose, but just a little bit more of a base coat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white for the vase. I'm just going to add a little bit more white, very random strokes. You want, you want to have that canvas pattern show through it adds so much depth to your painting but really just on one side and you can go ahead and do that same thing with the green just on the top of the light green leaves just add a few more very soft brush strokes and I'm gonna do the same with the dark On that one, I'm gonna do it because you could kind of see my pattern. And this way I can get that line covered up. Okay. Even your base coat's kind of pretty. Like if we skipped everything else and we added our background, that would be a really pretty painting. Yeah, just even going back in while people were catching up, filling in that other color, it looks awesome. Yeah, it just, it looks like hours of shading and highlighting and, and layering, <laughs> but really, really it's not. <laughs> it's just seconds. Just a quick second. <laughs> and the key is that black. It, when the black comes through, it's just very, very pretty. Yeah, so I think you can keep going. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll slow you down. Okay, slow me down. I'm gonna clean off my brushes. And again, just remove the water. Okay, so now we can have fun with the palette knife. So scoot your brushes to the side. So we are gonna start with the roses. So make sure that you have a good amount of all three of the colors and white, all three of the pink colors, I'm sorry, and the white on your palette. All right, so when working with the palette knife, I kind of compare it to like maybe making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If you push down really, really, really hard, you're gonna mess up your bread. Um, so you really want a really soft touch. Um, again, like peanut butter and jelly, when you're spreading it on, you wanna be, you wanna be flat with your canvas. You don't wanna work like that or you don't wanna work on the edge. You wanna work on the flat bottom of the palette knife and you just want a really soft touch. You don't want to mash into your painting. So those are really the, the basic tips for using a palette knife. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna add, and it's hard to tell on here the difference, but we are gonna add this dimension that almost looks like, like a textured oil paint. So you can see where there's a few different colors where it it's almost looks textured like it's lifted but it's not, it's just the way we applied it with the palette knife. So we're gonna start with the dark pink. 
Well, hey, Kirsten, could you maybe oh. practice while people are still oh, catching sure. up? Because I don't yep, want them yep. switching from brush to palette, missing that. But maybe if they've never used a palette, maybe oh, just absolutely. do a couple strokes. That is a great idea. Okay, so when you load a palette knife, there's really no wrong way to do it. But I like to load maybe just the bottom half. You don't want to load all the way up into the handle. And all you do is kind of tap your palette knife into the paint that you're wanting to use and then kind of tap out from where your paint is on the palette. Because you want paint on there, but you don't want as much as if you're dipping directly into your paint. So you kind of then just pat it out on your palette paper to remove some of that. So that is a loaded palette knife. And then I'm gonna go make sure you guys can see this. So then like peanut butter and jelly, you're just with a really soft grip, you're just gonna kind of skim across the surface. You can always add more paint when you need it, but you're just bare, like you're not mashing down because then you're just, you know, you just get kind of a, a smudge base coat. You want to just skim across your surface. You almost want to, and this is kind of waxy palette paper, but you want to almost let it just kind of go, oh, that's curved up, hang on. You want to let it just kind of skim across the surface because where you get this irregular pattern, is where we've created that, that texture that almost looks like um, a textured oil canvas. Is that helpful a little bit? Um, yeah, I think people And you know what we'll do? So I wanna show you, just while we're catching up, so this is loading one color. So I'm gonna load mostly that pink, and then I'm gonna put a little bit, so here, this'll be, this'll be this flower. I want to put a little bit of the soft pink when I load that. So you're almost double loading your palette knife. You've got the dark pink on the tip, and then you've got the light pink more in the middle. And again, you tap it off, but then when you load that, or when you unload that onto your canvas, very light-handed, you're just going to skim across the top, creating that texture. It's much cuter on the flower than it is on white. The difference between a light background and a dark background is magical. But you definitely want it to skip across and create that texture. Like you want to feel that drag. I know we talk sometimes yes. like you don't want to drag if your brush is too dry, but this you really want it to drag and not, you don't want a full swipe of paint. Correct, yep. You don't want to apply any pressure. You just want to set it on the surface and almost let it hop across the canvas. And you know what we could do? I was going to do the flowers first, but what if we do this? Clean off. You don't ever really need to do water with your palette knife. You could clean that off just with a paper towel. And what if we start with the gray, which is the tabletop, because that is just a real smooth one direction. And that'll be a great place to practice using the palette knife for anybody that hasn't used a palette knife before. A great idea. So I am going to, you know what, actually, I'm going to get a new piece of palette so that you guys can definitely see. Okay, and I'm gonna load the black and the white and again, not too much of either one. The black, the white, and the gray. Because this area down here is just a straight line, and so it'll be a great spot. Okay, so my palette knife is clean. I'm gonna dip it in the, in the gray. And you can see that just the end, you know, the bottom half is loaded. And then I'm gonna take some of that off, just pouncing it on my palette. You don't wanna remove it all, but you wanna remove some of it. And then, and here's a tip. I like to turn my canvas to what is most comfortable for me. Like it's hard for me to go from left to right, but I like to pull, pull towards me when I'm using a palette knife. So turn your canvas to whatever is comfortable for you. So I'm gonna turn my canvas so I'm pulling towards me. 
again, do whatever's comfortable for you if you wanna work left to right or right to left. But I angle mine just a little. And then very soft-handed, I'm gonna start on the edge of my canvas and I'm gonna let that palette knife just kind of skim across. Picking up paint where you need it. Just letting that skim across. Very light-handed. Yeah, I think it was a good idea to get started on the straight on flat. The gray. Yeah. Great idea, Kira. And then <laughs> it was a great idea. So then on this line right here, you can have some fun with it and kind of follow that line and maybe pull down just a little. Turning my canvas again. I'm gonna go under the vase to kind of create a highlight. And I'm gonna go under that vase. But you're just very lightly, and again, I always say comparing it to peanut butter, it's like the spot on your sandwich that you missed. <laughs> so you're just gonna go back and add a little bit more. So see how it just creates so much depth. The black is still showing, your dry brush base coat is still showing, and then those pops of soft gray are showing. In here, do whatever you like best. So like if you want more of the light gray, the steel gray, go over that maybe two or three times. But again, really soft-handed, because more is less, you cannot take off, but you can always add and add some more. You can go in, remove the gray. You can add a little bit of white to that same palette, to that same palette knife, remove it, dip in the paint and then remove it. And then you could just very lightly drag just a little bit of that white and see how it just jumps onto the right spot to create that texture. It's like a little highlight where the, where the light would hit your tabletop. You can even go back with the black. And remember, black, a little bit of black goes a long way. So always take a little bit off. And maybe on here, you would just wanna go under your vase. So you just go under the edge of your vase with just a little bit of black, almost creating like a little shadow. Was that a good way to kind of see what the palette knife can do? Yeah, I think that was great. Practicing, starting, and again, like it just brought yeah. it to life. And I know that Jess, she teaches such perfect, beautiful paintings, perfection. This is a different look. This is just very loose, almost, you know, a little bit of an what impressionistic look with layers yeah. and yeah so it's a different look but just a lot of fun techniques Jess can paint a cow I cannot but I bet like this I could paint a cow <laughs> he might not look as cute but he'd be different that's a challenge that's a challenge it's less of a challenge teaching me to paint a good cow <laughs> No, it looks great. So if you guys are ready, I'm just, again, just drying off, not using any water, but just using a paper towel to get my palette knife mostly clean. Yep. So I am gonna put pink back on my palette, all three shades, the light, the medium, and the dark. So I think it's magenta, pink, and uh, conch shell. And conch shell, yep, that's the yep. lightest one. And always make sure you've got some white on your palette. Okay, and really we're doing the same technique. The only thing a little bit different with this is we're going in the, in the direction of the petals. So I'm gonna start with this darkest magenta flower. I'm gonna load that palette knife. And again, load off a little bit, taking off some of that paint, but really just, you know, the bottom half. I'm gonna turn it a little bit. And you are gonna follow the edge, but doing the exact same thing, very little pressure and almost just creating a really soft drag. And it's okay, like right there where just the palette went onto the black, that's gorgeous. You do not have to worry about correcting that. You want that 
because that's just more layers. And you're just gonna very, I'm gonna turn my palette all the way around. You're just gonna add that bright magenta, softly dragging that palette knife around the petals. And like where it went over the light pink a little bit, that's okay, because you're gonna add palette knife to that one next. So now picking up a little bit of the medium pink, which is just regular pink, folk art pink, a little bit of the magenta. You're kind of double loading, but again, there's no right or wrong. The light pink can be more on the top, more on the bottom. You just want to, the key is having two colors on your palette knife. You see that? You can see the pink and how they kind of blend it on the palette knife. And I'm just going to do the same thing very lightly, picking it up as you need it very lightly skimming that on my flower, almost making different C strokes. You don't wanna outline it. You don't wanna mash into the canvas. You just wanna very randomly do almost like, like a little U stroke with the palette knife. And someone had a question if they have too much paint on their, on their flower. On can their they, actual canvas? Yeah, can they maybe scrape some off with a palette yep. knife? Yep, absolutely. And if you're more comfortable with a brush, you could even go in there, like, don't do too much where it almost becomes a base coat, but you could go in there and, like, scoop off a section. But you could also definitely do it with the palette knife. You could scrape off a section if you've got, like, a big blob. Yeah, definitely. And people are loving the palette knife. It's a lot of first timers with the palette it's knife. It's so much fun. So much fun. And see where I scraped it off? You can just go back and add some highlights. Okay, then I'm gonna clean my palette knife with the paper towel. And I'm gonna go in and do the same thing with both of these flowers. So we'll move to this one. And this was the medium pink or the the medium value pink, which is just regular folk art pink. I'm gonna load that onto my palette knife, but then I'm gonna go in and pick up some of the lightest pink. And you're just getting two colors on there. That's the key. The fun thing about this is there's no right or wrong. You just want two colors on your palette knife. And doing little quick C strokes no pressure, no pressure on your canvas and keeping it very flat with your canvas. You're just gonna go in there and add all of that dimension. Do a little bit more right there. I'm gonna soften the center with a few swipes of the palette knife. Just adding one more layer. You always want to clean it in between just so you don't have too much paint. And then for this lightest flower, I'm going to use the conch shell all by itself at first, just to accent the dry brush base coat. Little short C strokes, turning my canvas. I bet some of you don't even have to turn your canvas. I wish I didn't, but I have to. Turning my canvas so that I'm always pulling in a comfortable direction. And then you can see same colors. So like our dry brush base coat on that was the light pink. And now the palette knife is the same exact color, but you can see how it looks like you use so many different paint colors. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that palette knife and double load it with the lightest paint, the conch shell. Again, you can see I'm gonna add a little bit more white. There's only two colors on the palette knife and just go in there and highlight that middle flower with those colors. You can add more or less depending on how much 
Oh, and that's okay. I got a little bit of the dark in there, but I actually think that's kind of pretty. You're just adding with the palette knife until you get the, the amount of color that you want. Like I'm gonna go in and just lightly on my medium value rows, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of white in the center and a little bit on the side, almost to create the center bud. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of white and the folk art pink. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the biggest, with the, the darkest flower. Again, just to kind of create the center of that rose. How's everybody's looking? I can see lots of people painting along. Okay, I love it. I think people are just getting caught up. I'm gonna slow down. Yep, first time using the palette knife, which okay. we love. Everybody's loving it. That's so awesome. Oh, oh. Amy, I see you holding yours up. Oh, I can't see them, darn. Cute little, little Amy, just holding hers up. <laughs> oh, Glenda, awesome. It's fun to see everybody's. Hey, Catherine, I didn't see you last week. Karen, awesome guys. Oh yeah, look, so good. It's hard to scroll through pages and pages. Awesome guys. Connie, Marie, I'm gonna miss so many people, but I'm definitely looking, I promise. There's 17 pages of people on here. Oh wow, that's wonderful. Oh yeah. Amazing. So nobody feel rushed. All I'm going to do is load my palette with the green. Awesome, guys. Both the light green and the dark green. Hey, Kirsten, will you take your canvas and actually pull it up so people can see a close-up? Like, go straight oh, up with yep. it? Oh, oh, right there? Yep, you're good. Straight up, yep. There we go. Thank you. I think people just wanted to see a close up. Absolutely. And I know there was someone in the beginning that I don't think had a palette knife, but you can see like through all the steps, it's, it's really pretty with just the dry brush technique. The palette just adds to it, but like the leaves and the vase, that's really pretty and you didn't use a palette knife yet at all. Yeah. Elizabeth said, it kind of looks like a hot mess, but I think I like it. <laughs> I love that <laughs> That's the story of my life. <laughs> I love it. Listen, if this is making you smile, you're relaxing, you're with your family, you're having a glass of wine, that's all that matters. It's perfect. I love it. A hot mess is not bad. So when, and everyone slow me down if I need to, I'm just gonna talk a minute. So when I'm doing a smaller area, so now we're getting to the leaves, which is the smallest area with the palette knife, really the only difference is you load a little bit less of your palette, palette knife. So like for the gray, we loaded a lot. For the pink, we loaded about half. But for the gray, I just try to keep the paint, you know, closer to the end, just so there's less room for air, for it getting onto your pink flowers. Um, but that's really the only tip as you work into a smaller area using the palette knife. So I'm gonna load a little bit of green just on the tip. And I did the same thing. I went in the paint and then went right on out. But just that bottom half of the, or bottom section, really third of the palette knife. And this is the light green. And I'm gonna start at the tip of the leaf and just kind of pull that in the direction of the leaf. Oh, I just love that because you see canvas and you see black and you see the dry brush, which is the same color, but it looks like a different color. Oh, I just love it. <laughs> I know, I'm very easy to please. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing with this little leaf up here. I'm gonna start at the tip. I've just loaded the end. And I'm gonna start at the tip and just very soft handed, no pressure, just pull that down. Oh, I got a little pink on there. Let me get that off. Not a problem. And then I am gonna 
keep that green on my palette knife and load a little bit of the dark. You're using hunter green? Yep, hunter nice. green and the light green. And you can see that, again, it doesn't matter where they are on there, but I've got two greens loaded onto the palette knife. And all I'm gonna do is the exact same thing, starting on the end of the leaf, just a really simple stroke, rather than a brush though, with the palette knife, to create that texture. See how it just kind of jumped across and it made that green look like a shadow? I'm gonna do that same thing with this little light leaf over here. I've got the light green loaded and a little bit of the hunter. You can see two colors on the palette knife and you're literally just jumping across that leaf. Now clean that off and for my dark leaves, I'm gonna do, this is kind of a, a, a neat thing. So again, You've got your dark, that was just a base coat really, but with a dry brush technique. Using that exact same color with the palette knife. Oh, look, I gotta turn him all the way around. Look how using just that same color with the palette knife. Hard to tell with a dark color. Let's see if it shows up on the camera. I think it does. But you can see dry brush and palette knife makes the same color look totally different just because of the way it's applied. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Just one color on the palette knife, that dark green, and I'm just gonna loosely drag that. I'm gonna do the same thing with this little leaf up here. Just really loose. I got a little too much and that's okay. I'm gonna pull that down just creating a little bit of contrast between the light and the dark. And then I am gonna get a little bit of the light green, but on these darker leaves, you wanna use just a little bit less so that there's a contrast. So I've got a very little bit of the light green and then a little, and mostly the dark green, the hunter. And I'm just gonna do one quick stroke to create some highlights on these darker leaves. Pick up the paint as you need it. Just like adding just a little bit of dimension. Oh, you can always go right on over it. If it's maybe too straight of a line, you saw right there, it was almost too straight of a line. So you can just kind of go right over it, but you just don't want to work it and work it and work it because then you lose all of that texture. How's our speed? Good? Uh oh, I saw a confession. <laughs> Someone's been using watercolors. It's all right. That's all right. That's you can, well, yeah, I bet that's beautiful. I peeked up and I saw I have a confession. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really, really perfect and cute. So if you don't want to add this little bouquet of like loose rosebuds, let me scoot that into the, into the screen. You don't have to make your painting exactly what you want it to be. And this is kind of cute, but I am going to add those just for people that want to add them. And all we're doing there is super simple. What we are going to do is dip the end of our palette knife into the magenta. And we are going to do three, they almost, let me bring that up. They're almost like three little thumbprints. And you are going to use your palette knife and just do almost like a little, a little comma stroke. Very randomly in that corner. Three little thumbprints, almost the size of your thumb. Boop, boop, boop. And then you're going to go into the medium pink, which is folk art pink. I say medium, meaning the medium value. And you're gonna go right over that little thumbprint. Just with one, almost like a little U stroke. And then I'm gonna go into the lightest pink, which is the conch shell. And again, I'm just loading the very tip of my palette. 
and I'm just going to lightly drag that over both of my little rosebuds. Not both, all three of my little rosebuds. And then I'm going to clean off my palette and going into that dark hunter, you're almost painting with the palette knife, which is kind of fun. You wouldn't do your whole composition because you wanted to have the pattern. But to add a little, a little area like that, it's really simple to just use your palette knife. So just the end is loaded in the hunter green, and you are going to just swipe with the tip of your palette knife on both sides of those little rosebuds. Then you're gonna go in and add a little bit of the light green. And you're just going to lightly drag just, you're really only wanting to create dimension with the light and the dark. That's all you're doing. So you've got a little sprig of, of blooms that haven't, haven't quite opened off to the side, just to kind of really loosen up the, the painting. Just want me to hold that up, maybe, now that I've learned that trick. Yeah. But see how the black shows through and creates the shadow and the depth? Looks like very thick oil painting. No one will ever know it's not. Okay, we only have two more things to do with our palette knife. i slow down so everyone can catch up. Everybody is painting along. I love that. Does anyone, any more questions, Kira? No, I think, I mean, everybody is like super heads down painting. I love it. No, we, ha oh, sorry. I'm probably in trouble because I'm reading the comments and I'm not supposed to, but we have not <laughs> done the vase yet. <laughs> So maybe I'll do the vase if anybody's ready. But again, you guys tell me, should I slow down? The vase is super simple. It's just using just the white. I'm gonna add some of that to my palette. The great thing is this is all a lot of the same technique. So if you're a little bit behind, you can just keep going with your different colors. Absolutely. And all I'm doing is loading white into the palette or onto the palette knife and I'm gonna go from top to bottom you can go from left to right you can really do whatever you want but I'm gonna go from top to bottom and I'm gonna start where the top of that base is and just lightly skim picking up paint as you need it lightly skim and see there again I know I've repeated myself but I love where the same color looks totally different whether you dry brush or use the palette knife it allows you to have just a few paints, but create a million different layers. I'm gonna add white, maybe a straight line, kind of like we did for the, for the table, and bring that down. I'm doing a little bit heavier white on this side, just to create almost a shadow and a highlighted side and then a darker side. But then I am gonna go in, I'm gonna turn my canvas totally upside down, and I'm gonna start at the bottom and drag up, but again, just a little bit softer so it's not the same texture on both sides. I'm gonna keep more of the black canvas showing on that side and a little bit less showing on that side. Cute. The knife is flat. Hard to tell. Yeah, it's perfectly flat. Just the handle is at an angle. But they make so there's a met there's metal palette knives. There's a little bit wider plastic. Any of those palette knives would work great for this technique. 
they make really big palette knives, something that's super fun is to create a background on a canvas using just a palette knife. So that is a that is something that you guys will always use these techniques for and, and really enjoy that. How's my speed? Good? Good. Point. And so a lot of people ask when, whenever I do this, like why are we doing the base coat or the background technically last? And I guess the main reason I like to do that because I don't, usually people, if they paint their outside edge first, they have, they go in too close to their flowers and then they're having to layer their flowers over their background, which is the blue. And then you, you lose a lot of this great dimension. So whenever you're working on a dark color, like the dark black, and you're doing this very loose layer textured look, I like to do the background last because then you're not limited. You're not, you're not having to color in, color within the area that you've already base coated for the background. Does that make sense? It's why I like to do the, the background last, meaning the blue. That was a little bit confusing. Does that make sense though? Because if you do the blue first, you've limited where you put your designs. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so the blue is just a fun way to finish your painting. I'm gonna get rid of this dirty gross palette and I am gonna put our sky blue. Oh, do a better job than me and shake that up. Yep, that's how folk art should be. And then a little bit of white, always. And now here, have, have fun with it. If you want a little bit of gray in your background, beautiful. I'm just gonna use the sky blue and the wicker white. So what I'm gonna start with is just using the sky blue. I'm gonna load that palette knife. And I'm actually going to, and I know I said this was a no-no, like outlining exactly but I am going to start with outlining very loosely the outside edge of all of my painting. So keeping it flat with your, with your canvas. And again, a very light hand. I'm just going to go in and get it as close. You don't want to completely eliminate the black though. So make sure that you keep some of that black, but you want to get a little bit of a separation between your flowers and your leaves and the background. But you're gonna drag it softly and you're definitely gonna let that black show. And use, utilize the tip, the very thin part of the palette knife in little areas like that and almost use it like a paintbrush not applying too much pressure, but definitely outlining. Turn your, turn your canvas as you need to. Definitely outlining, but not eliminating the black. And I'm just using only the blue for now. Softly around your rosebuds. but don't scrub, don't use that to scrub in like that because that will just give you a solid blue. But you're just separating the black from all of your painting. But see, there's a perfect area. So see where the pink is so very, very light. Let's see if I can do this. The pink is so very, very light and you can see the texture of your canvas you don't wanna fill that in completely. You wanna keep that black shadow. You wanna keep that so that you don't eliminate that, that layer of texture. A few solid areas are great. Like right there is solid, that's perfect. You just don't want it to be a solid blue everywhere. 
you're kind of just painting with the palette knife for now. Make sure to go in that little center area where your vase, where your flowers are a little bit higher than your vase and fill that in with the blue. And it's kind of neat, like if the blue goes over the pink a little bit, that is, does not mean you have messed up. Okay, and then once you've got more of your outline done, this is really where it's important to make sure your edges are done. Because see how if you didn't, it creates that harsh black line. So you want to go and do that same technique on the edge of your canvas. all the way around on all your edges. Although that black's not, not a bad thing, it's kind of a nice frame for your painting. But you wanna go in there and get blue on all of those areas. Now, depending on what you like, if you like a lot of texture or not as much texture, you can get, let's see if mine is clean, your number 10 or your num or let's see, your number 10 brush would probably be best. And I'm going to dry mine off. Yours is probably already dried and clean. And then we're kind of working a little bit backwards, but if you want a softer background like this, once you've added your palette very lightly, I'm going to do it just on this section down here. Dry brush, go in and do those soft, random strokes just to fill in a little bit more solid. But again, just with a dry brush, don't eliminate all that black because that black is really why this looks so nice because it adds all that dimension but you're just with a dry brush, just like we did before, we're doing it reverse. We're just slightly dry brushing that blue background. And like in your rose petals, you can add a little blue in the middle, you know, just a little blue where the areas are maybe too black. Just have fun with it over there. You just don't want a lot of solid black areas. Don't use too much paint and don't, cover up the black. Okay. How's the base coat for the background coming? It should be very loose, very random, and it should have a pretty good amount of texture. And the only difference is we dry brushed in between so that we could outline with the palette knife. The main reason I wanted to outline our beautiful painting with the palette knife is because when people tend to have a brush in their hand and they're outlining, they tend to be very exact and they outline exactly and that would lose all of that dimension. So that's why I wanted you guys to outline with the palette knife rather than the brush. So once you have your blue background, we're going to then go back to the palette knife and do that technique. We're gonna add the, mainly the blue with a little bit of the white. It's a larger area. So again, you just have two colors on there. It doesn't matter where they are. And you, I'm gonna pull this way. I'm gonna start on the edge and I'm just gonna skim that palette knife, starting on the edge, picking up paint as I need it. And really just going towards the, the, towards the blue. I'm on the blue, going towards the flower, but not going into the colors. So picking up a little bit of blue and a little bit of white and just softly going around the background area of that canvas. If you want a lighter blue, you would add more white. If you want it mostly to be that beautiful sky blue, but you're just going back over there, creating just a little bit more texture till you've got the look that you want. A little bit of white, 
but a very soft hand. You don't want to drag or put pressure on your canvas. I have to make my voice quiet when I do soft hands. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just barely skimming over that. See how there's black, there's dry brush, and then there's the blue and the white. It's just creating all of that dimension. It goes all the way around, 360. And I'm just gonna do the same in that little area just to give it a little pop of white. I'm gonna do a little bit around my rose petal or my rose buds. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna do that same thing on my edge just so that there's some white on there. Very, very soft. There we go. And also on the top. I think that might be enough. I think so. How's it going? Did I go too fast at the end? Again, with the, with the palette knife, just really utilize that small end to get into those little areas and keep a really soft grip and flat with your canvas. You can add as much layered and textured as you want. If you see some areas where you might want to change your flowers, go in there and you can add even more. I'm, I think I'm okay with mine. Everybody's commenting how beautiful yours is. Oh, and I'm sure theirs are as beautiful. Yes. <clears throat> I bet they are. Yep, everybody's just finishing up. Any que questions? Oh, I see one. It's beautiful. Is that Amy? Amy, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, I'm going to butcher your name. D-R-E-D-A -E Young. Beautiful. Lena? Who oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, Who else is? Oh gosh, there's three in a row, three in the same room. Oh, I love it. Carol. Oh, Chris, this Roger, Chris, Chris has two. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> you guys, they're gorgeous. Awesome, you guys. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, I got to pick a winner. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. I love the brighter blue in the back. Love it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I hope you guys had fun. Oh, your paintings are really, really beautiful. Oh gosh, I'm glad I'm not picking. No. And everybody's commenting, so I gotta wait so I can pick real quick. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. You guys, you did such a good job. Thank you. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. I love to see them. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Good luck, Kira. <laughs> mm, anyway, there's still people who are commenting, so I want to make sure I get Oh, everybody. I love that. She left a lot of black. See, I love that. It's a whole different look if you leave more black or less black. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I want to look at everybody's. <laughs> Can we stay on this all night? <laughs> Watch out, everybody start over. Can we unmute everybody? <laughs> oh my gosh, could you imagine? I'd be happy. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, I've got my winner. She's blow drying it as we speak. Uh, hint, hint. I, gotta, I gotta go with the comments. Oh, she's got the blow dryer. I'm just saying. She may have a blow dryer in her hand. Don't everybody pick up a blow dryer. 
Oh, Are you ready? Oh, she's at the beach. I hope somebody's got <laughs> that. Carrie is at the real. beach. That is the safest beach there is right now. Oh, they're That's beautiful. Awesome. You guys did so good. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, did she write a word? All right. You guys ready? Drum roll. Blah, 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 All right. Blah, blah. All right. D Stewart. No first name. You still get to win. <laughs> I don't even see you on the screen here. D Stewart, are you still on here? I don't know. Okay. Oh, there you are. There you are. Hi. Okay. So what we need you to do is go to our plaid Facebook page and send us a direct message and let us know that you won um, watching a Michael's class with Kirsten and um, we'll go ahead and make sure you get your prize. And we will be here next week and everybody's asking what I'm going to look real quick. If everybody gives me two seconds, what we were painting because I cannot remember. They're so beautiful. Yeah. They're so great. Okay, so next week it is the 20th already, which is crazy. We are going to be painting an owl. So Jesse will be back and we're going to be painting an owl. And the next week we're going to be painting a beetle. So we're going to change it up. We've been doing a lot of florals. So you want to check those out on Michael's uh, community classroom page and you can sign up for those and we'll be back next Monday. So thank you guys so much. We could not thank you enough. Thank you, Michael's for having us. We thank love you. spending Monday with you. Um, keep painting, go back, watch the video, try again, get your supplies, take some me time and paint. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you next Monday. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Bye guys. Bye.